want to see and hear the amazing animated tale of Peter and the Wolf? Click here. Peter, what are you doing out here in the main menu? Get, get, get back in the house. Right away. Come on. Hi, I'm Ross Mallinger. Welcome to the animated tale of Peter and the Wolf. The composer, Sergei Prokofiev, created Peter and the Wolf to show him music and tell a story. Each character is played by a different musical instrument. For example, the flute is the bird. The cat is the clarinet. Grandfather is the bassoon. Hunters are played by the timpani. And the wolf is played by three French horns. And our hero Peter is played by the entire string section. Now in our animated adventure of Peter and the Wolf, we still have the instruments playing these characters. And on top of that, we've got a few voices too, including me as Peter. So sit back, get ready for a great adventure, and we're out of here! By the way, watch out for wolves. And one more thing. If you want to see the whole Peter and the Wolf story without stopping, click on auto. But if you want to be in charge yourself, Click on manual. Okay, let's go. No. <sighs> kitty. Kitty, kitty. Kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. Hey, cat! Oh, come on, where are you? I know I can do this. This is the story of Peter and the Wolf. Peter lives with his grandfather at the base of the Matterhorn in a beautiful meadow. It had been a long, cold winter, and the warm sun and fresh, cool breeze were exactly what Peter needed. I'm out of here. So, making sure he isn't seen by his grandfather, Peter sneaks out of the house, past the big garden gate, and out into the meadow. His meadow. Ah, uh, yes. Peter spots his favorite climbing tree in the distance, and decides climbing is a perfect pastime for a perfect spring day. So... He sets out for the big oak tree on the pond's bank. 
Suddenly, a bird darts down and playfully circles Peter's head. Peter and the bird are old friends. <laughs> hey, I'm glad to see you too. He takes off after her toward the big oak tree. Peter starts to climb, doing his best to keep up. Finally, they reach a large branch at the very top of the tree. So, what is it already? Oh! The bird proudly shows Peter the reason for all the excitement. Her nest! Filled with six recently laid eggs. The eggs are a brilliant blue with black spots. And of course, Peter immediately tries to touch them. <gasps> but you can look, but you can't touch, the bird tells Peter with a hyper flutter of her wing. But Peter doesn't take no lightly and he climbs to a higher branch. He hangs upside down and tries to touch the eggs when she's not looking. But she is looking. And Peter backs away. Oh, brother. Maybe if you're quiet, you can touch them, the bird seems to say. I promise. So very, very carefully, Peter reaches out and touches one of the sky blue eggs with the very tip of his finger. Just then, a fluffy, fat duck, contentedly quacking to himself like a reedy old oboe, begins his trek from the house to the pond, waddling all the way. You see, the duck is very happy because Peter forgot to shut the gate. Now he can have a nice swim in the pond. It had been a long winter for him, too. The bird notices the duck. But the duck, oblivious to all else, continues his ridiculous journey to the pond. cannot believe her eyes. Besides, she definitely doesn't like having to share Peter with anyone else. Especially this poor ornithological excuse. A poor what? Those were her words, not mine. Anyway, the bird flies out of the tree and circles round the duck. Just to get a closer look. How could any creature who has so much trouble getting from one place to another and on the ground, no less, ever call itself a bird, she says. The duck, however, doesn't even notice the bird. And with one last waddle of his fat, feathery body, the duck dives into the blue, clear water. The bird can't contain herself any longer. She takes to the air, once again circling the duck. But the duck is in heaven swimming leisurely around the pond. The bird, however, does not like to be ignored. Hey, how can you call yourself a bird down there in the water like that? Why, no self-respecting bird can swim. Yeah, how come? Still, the duck swims, trying to shut out the bird's shrill yapping. His pace begins to quicken and his nautical patterns go wild and reckless as the bird buzzes around him. L listen to me, get up here in the air where you belong. Get out of that pond right now. Yeah, right now. And it went on and on like this. Suddenly, amidst all this confusion, Peter's cat appears in the meadow. spots the bird. The bird is busy arguing with the duck, the cat seems to be thinking. So I'll just get a little closer and maybe I can grab her. 
He steals toward the bird through the tall grass, disappearing, reappearing, and then disappearing again like a chameleon, hiding here and there. There you are. Look out! With a flurry of the flute, the bird takes to the air, streaking away from the leaping cat with lightning speed. And with a quack of the oboe, the duck makes a beeline out of the way, a blur of feathers, web feet, and water splashing everything in sight. Quack! 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 The cat decides that all of this is truly too much trouble for such a small snack. Besides, by the time he gets to the top of the tree, the bird will have flown away anyhow. As for the duck, well, the cat could take a swim for it if he really wanted to. But no self-respecting cat swims. Not even for a nice, plump duck. Peter, what are you doing out there in the meadow? Peter! All of a sudden, Peter's grandfather walks out into the meadow, bellowing like a rusty old bassoon. Young man, if I've told you once, I've told you a million times, this meadow is a dangerous place, a very, very dangerous place. The edge of the forest is right over there, you know that. And there are all kinds of, of ferocious creatures living behind those trees. What, what if a wolf came out of the forest all of a sudden and, and, and gobbled you up? Where would you be then, huh? Huh? Uh, you'd be in his belly, that's where you'd be. I'm telling you, Peter, once and for all, this meadow is no place for boys to just play around in without a care in the world. Peter! A wolf is nothing to laugh about. It's serious business. Very serious business. But boys like Peter are not afraid of wolves. Yeah, boys like me are not afraid of wolves. Wolves, stupid old wolves. Am I the kind of kid that's afraid of wolves? Don't think so. Uh-uh, not me. No way. Definitely not. Peter, who you talking to? Uh... I ask you who you talk... Well... Are you making fun of me? Oh, man. Come on, boy. I've had enough of this. More than enough. I'm an old man now. I got more important things to do than to chase you around the meadow every day. You're a big boy now. You ought to know better. I certainly taught you better. Now, young man, you get back in that house right away. Before I... 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 Climbs up the tree. Meow. <laughs> the 
the duck also spots the wolf. And in all the excitement, he leaves the safety of the pond, jumps out of the water, and makes a run for it. Meanwhile, the wolf is getting closer and closer and closer, moving in on the duck, who is now quacking for all he's worth trying to get away. Quack! 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 Closer and closer and closer. And he grabs the duck. And with one gulp, he swallows the duck whole. Here's how things stand. The cat is perched on one branch of the tree, and the bird is on another, but not too close to the cat. climbing tree on the pond's bank. From his hiding place in the tall grass, Peter finds a rock on the ground. He throws it into the pond. The wolf runs to the water to see what new gastronomic delight is splashing around. Meanwhile, Peter climbs the tree and finds the bird. Lie down and circle the wolf's head. I've got a plan. Don't blow it. That wolf has it bad for birds. Soaring and darting and diving and displaying unbelievable flying skills, the bird does what Peter told her. At first, the wolf is so stunned by this feat of courage, he doesn't even attempt to catch her. He just tries to keep out of the way. But quickly, the wolf comes to his senses. His eyes glow red as he prepares to catch the bird. The wolf misses, for the bird is way too quick and agile. But he tries again. And again he misses. 
Together, the bird continues her aerial assault on the wolf. This time, she leads him in a circle. Around and around and around. Ha! The wolf keeps snapping, but he doesn't stand a chance. For the bird is way too clever and way too fast. Finally, in momentary defeat, and no doubt exhaustion, the wolf gives up. He takes a quick rest before deciding what's next on his menu. Little did the wolf realize that a rope was slowly navigating its way down through the very tree he was snoozing under. The rope slithers to the ground like a snake, gently wrapping itself around his tail. Suddenly, Peter tugs on the rope. Which of course awakens the wolf. Trying to escape the rope now tied to his tail, the wolf jumps wildly around. But Peter keeps pulling on the rope with all of his might, slowly pulling the wolf closer and closer. But it isn't enough. After all, Peter doesn't weigh that much. And the wolf gains ground. Back and forth it goes, this battle between Peter and the wolf. Finally, Peter musters all of his strength and he gives one more gigantic pull. And the wolf, in total disbelief, finds himself dangling from the tree. Just then, a flash of red and a puff of smoke appear way off in the distance. A band of hunters rolls out of the woods. You see, the hunters were following the wolf's trail. The hunters are a clumsy, bumbling bunch, and even though they're trying to silently sneak up on the wolf, their guns accidentally go off in an impromptu 21-gun salute. Marching through the meadow, like a miniature toy army, the hunters spot the wolf dangling from the tree in the distance. Celebrating that they've finally caught up with the wolf, they fire a volley of shots into the air, this time on purpose. The noise startles the wolf so much that he opens his mouth in surprise and... Quack! Quack! The duck, still alive, falls out with a... Quack, 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 quack. The hunters draw their guns, not sure whether to shoot the wolf or the duck. Quack, quack, quack. Hey! What are you doing? Don't shoot! Anything! And Peter runs over to help the poor, confused duck get back up on its wobbly, webbed feet. Still trembling, the duck realizes his incredible luck. He begins to dance a ridiculous ballet of joy. The dizzy duck pirouettes in front of the wolf. Oh, 
still hanging by his tail, is now feeling more than a bit mortified at his situation. The duck's wobbly pirouettes don't help any either. Huh? Regaining his composure, the wolf snaps and growls at the duck. Quack, 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 quack. Catching the poor duck's tail feathers in his mouth. Quack! Oh no! Quack! Before Peter can make a move, the duck wiggles free, waddling dizzily away. Now help us take the wolf to the zoo, Peter tells the hunters. You see, the wolf will be safe at the zoo, and so will everyone else. And following Peter's lead, the entire meadow begins to prepare for the grand procession. Before you know it, the hunters volunteer to build a cage for the wolf. Unfortunately, they aren't any better at carpentry than they are at hunting. The wolf naturally is not pleased. and they rush to join Peter and the wolf in a procession to the zoo. Just when the celebration really started to get rolling, Grandfather reappeared. So, Peter, you disobeyed me again, didn't you? But we... but... I caught the wolf, didn't I? Yes, yes you did. But what would have happened if you hadn't caught the wolf? What if the wolf had caught you instead? Well... The meadow is a dangerous place. I keep telling you that over and over and over again, but you just don't pay any attention to me. I'm... You just... I'm... I'm sorry. But aren't you proud of me? No. No, I'm not. Now you listen to me. Even a little? Well, a little, maybe, yeah, I guess, but, uh, yes, yes, I am, Peter, and maybe, maybe, maybe even a lot. <laughs> Come on, Grandfather, it won't be a real parade without you. Uh, I love you, Peter, I really do. <laughs> uh, so now, imagine the triumphant parade. Marching in the Grand Parade, proud of the brave Peter. And of course, the bird joins in too. Not only celebrating the wolf's capture, but her six new babies who had hatched amidst all the excitement. celebrate. That is, except for the duck. Still quivering in fear, the duck can barely walk, much less march in an important parade. Instead, he stands hiding in the grass, trembling all alone. Hey, what are you doing over there? Everything turned out okay, didn't it? Listen, you'll never have to be scared again, because I'll always be here to protect you. Then, Peter gently picks up the duck, places him in the honored position on his shoulder, and off they go to join the others. See ya! Quack.
you want to find out more about the instruments of the orchestra, click here. You can even be the composer yourself and rearrange the musical instruments. Come on, go for it. Welcome to the symphony orchestra. To hear the different musical themes from Peter and the Wolf, click on each animated character and I'll guide you through. Hey, want to know more about the animation or the music for Peter and the Wolf? Click here to find out. Click here to find out more about Chuck Jones. He's a great artist. After all, he drew me. Sergei Prokofiev. Man, what a name. He composed the music for Peter and the Wolf. What else did he compose? Click here to find out. Sergei Prokofiev. Man, what a name. He composed the music for Peter and the Wolf. What else did he compose? Click here to find out. If you want to play the completely awesome log jam game with me, click here. We'll go out to the river in the meadow. But don't tell my grandfather. He doesn't like it when I... Peter! Peter, stay away from that river! That wolf would just love to climb up on a log and float down and get you! If I've told you once, I've told you a million times. Stay out of the water and the meadow. Boy, am I in trouble now. Welcome to Peter and the Wolf's Log Jam Game. Come on, make it across the river with me. But don't get knocked off your log or you'll have to start over. And don't forget, watch out for the wolf. The object of the game is to get to the other side of the river. Come on, you can make it! Good job! Why don't you try the next level? All right! Bonus points! Peter! Stay away from the water! It's trouble, my boy! Big trouble! Whoa!
Good job. Why don't you try the next level? All right, bonus points. Peter, stay away from the water. It's trouble, my boy. Big trouble. You made it! All right! Bonus points! Help me look for that log with the egg. You'll get 300 bonus points. Incredible!